September is absolutely stacked for new releases on the Switch that I really want to play. No, I need to play. <laughs> and I thought that I would share this half excitement and half struggle for the ever-growing backlog with all of you by putting together a list of every single Switch release just in September 2022 alone that I think is worth keeping an eye out on. This is a bit of a longer list than I typically do, with a few I've previously mentioned in my upcoming games videos, so we may go over these just a little bit quicker this time around. But who knew they would be releasing a lot of these around the same time though? <laughs> Boobless is a game that I've been enjoying on PC since its release and later on the Steam Deck as well. So it really is a joy to see it on the Nintendo Switch since it is always my preferred platform to play on. Basically, I would describe this as a cozy monster catching game like Pokemon, but instead of fighting type battles, you have dance battles to catch more little oobs, gather rare materials from them, or simply level up. If that's not enough to sell you on this game already, the quirky cast of characters and colorful little town is just oh so charming and easy to fall in love with as you help the mayor save Badge Town. Here Comes Nico is described as a cozy 3D platformer for tired people. I just love the sound of that off the bat. <laughs> and everything from the art style, colors, music, gameplay is so cute and wholesome. You play as Nico and you're a new employee of Tadpole Inc. where you guessed it. Your boss is a frog. It's got puzzles, it's got fishing, bug catching, and more. For many of us looking for something super lighthearted and a bit of a different gameplay from the typical farming or life sim, I can't imagine you can go wrong with this new cozy gaming release. I've been waiting for what feels like forever for this next game, Temtem. As many of you probably know, I grew up a Pokemon kid and so I just love any type of that sort of monster catching and collecting type of game and Temtem brings in their own take into this genre with bright and colorful visuals and the most adorable little monsters. Expanding on the Pokemon formula, you can also do more things like customizing your character, buying and decorating your own home, and exploring an open online world with other players. Oh, I hate to play favorites, but Disney Dreamlight Valley is definitely high up there on my list. I mean, you put together Disney characters and Animal Crossing type of gameplay mixed with several other cozy gaming favorites in there. Life sim with quests and exploration, it just seems like it would be the perfect formula for my kind of game. I really hope it doesn't disappoint with early access asking players to pay a fee to an otherwise free game if you want to wait for the official global release in 2023. With the Ultimate Edition Founder Pack costing 90 Canadian dollars, it does sound quite steep, but I'm really looking forward to getting hours and hours of fun with this one. I haven't heard anyone talk about this game yet, but it caught my eye because it's like a cute Metroidvania style game and it's inspired by Slavic mythology. Cat Maze is a side-scrolling pixel platformer about a sorceress named Alesta, and you must go on a quest through forests, marshes, and villages as you challenge different mythical beasts. It seems you'll be meeting a lot of characters as well, and it's up to you to help them out with their destinies. I personally haven't been playing a lot of competitive games lately besides a few exceptions, and this is one of them. The third installment to Nintendo's Squid-tastic franchise is here and offering what we know and love from the previous games, plus more of everything, from the multiplayer gameplay to the single-player campaign mode. They even came out with a super pretty Splatoon edition, Switch OLED, and not gonna lie, I'm so tempted to buy it just for the ombre Joy-Con. Has to be the best special edition release of a Switch so far, in my opinion, and I can't wait to see what they'll do with future releases. Baron Breakfast finally makes its way over to the Switch after just a few delays. <laughs> I did demo this on the Steam release a couple of weeks ago, so feel free to check that out. I'll have it linked in the cards. It's about a bear that runs bed and breakfasts, and you're free to decorate and design them as you please. What I really appreciated about this game is that it lets you enjoy it at your own pace, and that's really one of the key things that makes a perfect casual game for me. 
You're free to play it how you want and tackle the different tasks when you want, while still giving a good storyline to follow. If you like building and decorating in games, this is something that may be worth adding to your collection. Melatonin seems to be another wholesome hidden gem that I haven't heard much about yet. It's a rhythm game with a story about self-reflection. The world blends together reality and dreams and it's filled with fun mini games that lets you explore said dreams. <laughs> the airy pastel colored art style is very aesthetically pleasing and the chill lo-fi beats relaxing. I hope to see more about this game in the coming weeks and hopefully we do get to play it on our Switches sooner than later. Return to Monkey Island is a continuation of a couple of classics on PC. I didn't actually know much about this until the Nintendo Direct, but I've been really curious to try it since. It's a point and click type with puzzle elements and the art looks like it's coming straight from a storybook, which is what caught my eye about it initially. But the story of Guybrush and friends are also intriguing. It makes me want to learn more about it and embark on this adventure with them. Wildflowers is another witchy life sim which brings you to the cozy rural town of Fairhaven. You play as Tara and you came to help out your grandma on her farm but you soon discover that she may actually be linked to a local coven. Spend your days taking care of crops, animals, fishing, crafting, and eventually learning about the world of magic and spells. Wildflowers focuses a lot on diversity and inclusivity, and with a fully voiced cast of characters, this game is surely one that does a lovely job standing out from the rest. Beacon Pines is a unique and charming game with a dark mystery. You see the world as a storybook and you play as the book's reader, where you navigate through the different parts of the story using something called the Chronicle. This allows you to jump back and forth between various versions of the story as you investigate the strange happenings in Beacon Pines. Luca and his friends are the only ones who seem to realize what's going on, so it's up to you to unravel the untold truths and change the fate of the world. Yet another game that is high up on my list this month is Potion Permit. I did try this out way early on in its earlier builds, so I'm eager to finally play the final release version on the Switch. I'm told quite a bit has changed for the better, of course, and I can't wait to re-experience this game along with the rest of you. The game is about a skilled chemist coming to the town of Moonbury to help the mayor's daughter with her illness. Not everyone is welcoming at first since they believe in their traditional ways of healing, but you must gain their trust and share your gifts in alchemy in this cozy RPG. Camped Out very much reminds me of Haven Park with the top-down cutesy, woodsy camping environment. <laughs> But this is a couch co-op game for up to four players. Basically, you have to work together to set up your camp before it gets dark, with each level testing your skills to build tents, craft a campfire, cook food, manage resources, and more, all on a time limit. There aren't plenty of cozy co-op games that come to mind, so I'm glad to see one we can add to our list, and one that seems to be friendly for all ages too. Taken Tatsujin Rhythm Festival is the latest game to come out from one of my all-time favorite rhythm games after four years. It's so much fun to play, especially with other people, where you get to drum to the beat of many popular music titles, from your usual hits to classics to anime and even other video game music. This time adding new online battle modes, a party mode, what seems to be a music subscription service which reminds me of the Just Dance Ultimate subscription and even a little storyline. As if there's not enough farming games already released for the Switch and more yet to come. Life in Willowdale comes out this month and I'm not complaining. I love to see different studios coming out with their own takes of this beloved genre these days. Life in Willowdale is about well, <laughs> life in Willowdale. Once a village full of life, it's now finding itself in peril. The villagers and animals no longer feel safe here, so the mayor asks you for help to restore everything back to the peaceful life and the town's former glory. Poco Life has come a long way. Another game that I got to play in its earlier build, Link in the Cards. I unfortunately experienced a lot of bugs at the time, so I did step away from this game. So 
I have a lot of expectations. Hoko Life is very Animal Crossing-esque where you end up in a town via train ride where talking animals happen to reside. The charming town of Hoko does have a lot to offer, with tons of freedom in customizing your town, your villagers' homes, and of course your home too. And there's plenty more to do, so I'm curious to see if many players who are taking a break from Animal Crossing right now will feel right at home with this game. Dorf Romantic? Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. It's unlike any game that I've played before. I'm sure this genre has been out for a while, but this is the first of its kind that I've played. In Dorf Romantic, you start off with this peaceful little world made up of tiles. And as you place down more tiles, you build various types of landscapes full of trees or mountains or water or villages. Building more and getting a better score lets you unlock more tasks and tiles and biomes to build with. It's a very slow paced, relaxing gameplay that I think is perfect for that peaceful gaming getaway. If you love cafe management sims and farming games, then this is a perfect little mix of the two. In Lemon Cake, you find yourself in an abandoned, worn down bakery that also happens to be haunted with a friendly ghost that will help you along the way. This is definitely a first for me. You will have to repair it and get it running again, as well as try to grow a farm and take care of animals, so you can offer the freshest of homegrown ingredients to your customers. It definitely appears to have a simpler gameplay, but if that consists of the things we all enjoy, like cooking, farming, taking care of animals and such, then that is all we need. I'm so excited for this game to finally come to Switch. I talked about this a few months ago and mentioned that I've been loving playing it on the Steam Deck. I swear I didn't buy a whole Steam Deck just to play a pixelated version of something like Zoo Tycoon or Planet Zoo, but here we are. I loved Zoo Tycoon growing up, and this is like the perfect, cozy, cutesy version of that. It's a zoo management game where you get to build and design the zoo of your dreams and adopt different animals you'd like to house in your zoo. You also get to build and design their comfy little habitats. The fun part though is that you can also make unique fusions between your animals and find ways to attract zoo goers with the ultimate goal of a thriving, prosperous zoo for everyone to envy. Now, did you say you also liked playing games with virtual animals where you can care for them and build homes for them. I got you. <laughs> How about one that is only filled with bunnies? Bunny Park is, I would say, pretty much a minimized version of something like Let's Build a Zoo, where you run a bunny park, as the title says, and you can decorate cute spaces for your bunnies to make them happy, attract more bunnies, and increase your park's ratings. Still with me? <laughs> there is no shortage of amazing games coming out just for the month of September alone. We are truly spoiled, and my wallet may be crying, but my heart is full of wholesome, cute, adorable games. <laughs> Which games will you be treating yourself to this month? I'll be checking out a few of these games on the channel with a gameplay preview or a review, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and keep an eye out on those upcoming videos. And like this video if you like this video. I appreciate you. Thank you so, so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I will see you next time.